It's not showbiz as usual, is it? This can bring you to any time and place and make you feel like you're there. It's a science project in service to art. Because sometimes it takes a grand madness to have the vision building a place that we've never experienced before. That's what it is if you're a U2 fan. It's more than just going and hearing songs. It's an experience. It always has been. Climbing on stages, jumping in crowds, bringing the world, and in fact, at times, out of space, into the stadiums and embellishing what these songs mean to us as fans. So where do you go next? Into the sphere to launch the unknown. I don't know where live performance goes from here, but we're going to find out. Zane. Ooh. How are you, man? Nate. What's going on? Good Yo, to see you. What's going on? my friend. Ah. How you doing? Good. Really good. What's going on? I finally got to meet the you legend. Met. Yes. Well, he's very calm for a man who's Works with who you. has a great storm <laughs> on the inside. <laughs> yes. Blowing up. And somehow you're able to tap into that and bring it to life. Yeah. And it becomes this oh. beautiful thing. I mean, well, he's done a ridiculous job of managing the ridiculousness, not just of the building, but what we're trying to do with the building. Yeah. Well, it's vastly different to how it was when I was here seven yeah, months ago, I'll tell you that. Yeah. Was, yeah. We yeah, wanted yeah. you to see it at the next stage. Yeah, I'm really glad I'm here. I mean, I love it. This has been one of the, the, my favorite experiences in my life, to be honest, of doing this kind of work has been to start with you out in the desert at that mining town where right. I feel like in, industry got its first footing in the desert out in, in Nevada. Mm -hmm. And then to come in here and see it from the old strip up to here where it sits now with this place, which is... Um, mad. Mad. Yeah. Yes, it's it is. It's just it's mad. mad. And it was the dream of a mad man. He, he is Irish, mm. we are assured. His name is Dolan, and we are very grateful to him. Yeah. Because sometimes it takes a grand madness to have the vision and to spend all that dosh building a place in service to the likes of us. Like us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, so yeah. We're, we're really yeah. grateful. I mean, it's a science project. I hope I'm not like paraphrasing out of term, but you said it was a combination of art, science, and diplomacy. diplomacy. <laughs> <laughs> that made me laugh. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, this, this man is, is really committed. This is not, he doesn't do things by halves. Yeah. And it really is a privilege to get to open it and, yeah. and help. I suppose in a way with the build. I mean, and, and Willie's been here for how long? Most of my adult life, it feels like. But yeah. <laughs> no, we've, we've been on this for like a year or more now, I think. So yeah, yeah. Smash is one of our team yeah. brings video the director. visuals together. Video director. Pretty much everyone up here, we owe our lives to. Yeah. Well, it's just nice to see the band back together, extended and yeah. insular. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like like yeah. the like the crew. That's and great. it's awesome seeing a stage and seeing a drum kit and seeing something resembling a lighting rig, albeit probably the smallest assembled lighting rig <laughs> on a conventional level you've ever yeah. created. We have 12 lights and we're going to make <laughs> yeah. them work. Yeah, so. Have you seen, or do you have a copy by any chance of you know those Brian Eno turntables that he made? I don't want to talk about it because I, I, I got there too late and didn't get one and they're so limited and amazing. And then you've gone and made one that's like... Have you seen it? The largest Can Brian Eno turn turntable I've ever seen in my life. Do you want to yeah. see it? This makes me sad Look at this. at the same time. Uh, I didn't get one, so I made one of my own. Right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Take that, Brian. Only, yeah. <laughs> well, he was saying that it moves in an algorithmic state, so it has its own, it has its own rhythm and its, its own, own feel. Its own mind. It's, I want to get to the, to the sort of basic human experience from U2's point of view, which was when you walked in here and you actually got to do something practical in this space, what did that feel like? I don't know what that would have been, whether it would have been just standing there while the visuals went around you, whether you consider that to be firing up the instruments and playing live for the first time. Like, when did it feel real? We were here with you yeah. when it was half finished. Walking in and actually seeing our stage there yeah. um, and seeing our, our instruments and light and the finished building yeah. was quite a moment, to be honest, because that's when it really got real, where yeah. you're actually yeah, we have a job imagining <laughs> there's going to be a person in each one of these seats. And the proximity is incredibly intimate. Yeah. That's what's so amazing. It's, it's 18,000 people, but you're, everyone is going to get this perfect view of, of the stage. Unfortunately, 
with this incredible visual, like we're going to be have our work cut out to actually Didn't I say get that, people's yeah. attention. Yeah. That's what Not I said before all. you arrived. <laughs> I said, you guys have always, to me, everything you've ever done from climbing on top of the roof at Red Rocks right through to the last major tour that you've done, or even recently going out and reading for people and presenting your book is about creating connection. Yes. Right. And that to me is at the heart of what you two does is to try and reach people and touch people. Yeah. And I think this might be, in a good way, your biggest challenge yet. Yeah. Because it's your biggest environment and you are in the it's smallest true. space you've been. It's like a throwdown. Yeah. It's like, how do you make this personal yeah. connection in this big, big do, venue? Do you remember when we were standing on this spot and we realized that our voice had hardly any reverb on it. Mm. And we thought all the other venues that you play in, sports mm. arenas, stadiums, we'd be shouting right now, but I'm kind of whispering, talking yeah. to you, and you can hear me. That is the way this whole venue works. The sound is at a level that we've never experienced before. And you can whisper, I can whisper from that stage. I mean, look at it, just in darkness. I was saying before that I, I find it overwhelming when it's pitch black in here. Yeah. You know, because it just seems to go on forever and ever and ever. And so when you start thinking about what you're going to present upon what feels like an infinite space, where do you begin spiritually or holistically? What is the uh, feeling you're trying to uh -huh. create in here? Well, I have to try and answer your question and not sound like a complete pretentious <laughs> fucking wanker. What we wanted to do was create a, like, it should feel like a cave. It should feel, we want to strip it of all electricity. We want to strip it of all its technology. I mean, we want to start with the very first expression that people had, uh, which was cave painting. Mm. And so you might think, it's a very science fiction cave you got here, but that's what we're going to do. So we're going to bring it right back to that first moment. And that's how we start the show. And I sing, as I did on Zoo TV originally, I sing an Irish melody. It's called Shanos. Mm. Shanos is normally unaccompanied singing. It's the North African influenced Irish, you know, our music in Ireland that has real strong connections um, with the Southern Hemisphere. So, and I won't have my glasses on. I find my goggles, yeah. my fly shades. I put them on. They don't just change the way people see me. They change the way I see the world. The way the band then performs behind that moment is straight out of the future. With a touch of 1990 in Berlin, in Zoo Station. Wow. Zoo Bahnhof which is also beside the zoo. That's why it was called Zoo Station. And during the war, when the Allies were bombing Berlin, these creatures from the zoo escaped. So in the rubble, there was, you know, you have giraffes and rhinos walking around Berlin. So it became this surrealist picture. And the Dadaists were, you know, Hitler hated Dada. It's like, don't laugh at me. You know, come at me, mm. come with your, you know, come at me with violence. That's mm. my language. Mm. But laughing, and I think, I think laughter is really important. The way we have to deal with the present violence too, mm. is to unzip it a little bit. All that macho energy of people on the streets, you know, it's like, calm down, spank their bosses. Bring it back to being as human as little yeah. babies. Yeah. This is our acting baby. Should we give it and, a go? And uh, let's give you a little taste of it. I mean. So this is a cave. Do you, you don't even have, do you have me singing in Chanos and all Maybe. that opening? We're just seeing where we are. Because that'd be funny, you'd hear, this is all work in progress. The thing also to remember though is, oh. this could all change. A little bit earlier. Yeah. We may not, <laughs> this is like this week's <laughs> show opening, this is this week's. Yeah. In fact, it would be incredibly you too if it did. <laughs> it, would be, it would be very unlike us if we stuck with the plan. <laughs> this, we used to call, we'd call this the swarm of bees. Ha! 
Uh -huh. I love this. This is crazy. Oh my God. And it's not intended to be a cruciform, but it was inspired by Tato Ando's Church of Light. But here we go. Hold on. <laughs> I'm ready I'm ready for the laughing gas I'm ready I'm ready for what's next <laughs> No shit <laughs> Ready to duck Ready to die Ready to say I'm glad to be alive So this podium here in the middle, which is the center of the vinyl, yes, the is, this revolves and allows these extraordinary silhouettes against this. So, so they get these giants. We can put edge even taller than what we're seeing. This I know. is the most mind blowing uh, yeah. thing. Yeah. Uh, um, what? What next? Let's give you a... Um, just to say, the cost to move all that concrete like that, it costs us so well. It's so strange. I, I'd imagine anybody who would move in here would be encouraged to forget what they've done and try to lean into the futurism of this, and yet somehow it, everything you've done makes sense here. A lot of the footage there is from, is original footage from Zoo TV in 92, Mark Pellington's original TV Footage. But surely the uh, res of that would, would, would just get crushed in a place of this. We like the crush in that case. So that is the actual original footage because yeah. it's amazing. But that's yeah. why you, it, it's, it's the decay contrast. is attractive. Yeah. 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 Um, but obviously yeah. repurposed. What, uh, play, uh, maybe thing? Marco Brimbio. Oh, this, no, this is, is a head oh, yeah, well, strap in. So thing. this is our ode to Elvis. Even better than the real thing. This is some AI Elvises. And this is. Whoa. whoa so this is. Whoa. This whoa, will be us. Whoa. I'm a. Oh yeah. So, yeah whoa, this, whoa, whoa. so you got to imagine that's their live pictures. This is where we're, this is where we're hiding the. Now the sound will be a bit louder. <laughs> so just say, don't be worried about the sound. <laughs> so they're all Elvises in from different periods. Little Elvis in the manger. There's Elvis on the strip. There's Elvis. Elvis is a baby. Elvis is a pharaoh. Oh, it's super disorientating. Isn't it? Oh, man. Man. It's bad. Like, this is so crazy what's happening right here. The world is, is falling down in front of your eyes. Marco is really an extraordinary talent. And to, he did this piece for us. In a detail, huh? Yeah, yeah. The player is in a detail. And, and Mike Fisto is in here, and uh, Edge's Space Cowboy is in here. So there are these little Easter eggs all over. The yeah, I mean, how would you ever find them? There's like a... You have to come to the show 500 times. Exactly. Like, yeah, yeah. Um, but we, we, we also... We have... It's kind of a wedding chapel, if you think about it. Yeah. So people come to it. They get married in the Elvis Chapel. Wow. I knew it was going to be something epic and iconic, and I knew it would be art at the highest level. But it had to be trashy too. But trashy. Taste <laughs> is the enemy of art, darling. What I didn't realize, though, was that it was going to create such a profound feeling. Yeah. Ooh. Hello. Oh, this. Guy. Yeah. 
This is an Irish is artist. No, it's the surrender flag. He surrender, John Gerard. Um, we asked John to do this for us. He was very taken with the concept of surrender. He's an Irish artist. He's one, really, one of the most inspiring artists of, of it's actually the century one of so far. My favorite pieces of art I've seen in a long time. So we built that. I mean, I didn't. There's a lot of people here who built it. Well, John. John, John made sure that every single grain of sand was correct. But it's, these are ones and zeros. This is not photography. This is not cinema photography. This is from a game engine, but a, a game engine taken to the next level, a level that's never been at before. I have felt emotion hearing this song perform live many, many times in my life, but I haven't had a feeling like that, even just listening to it without you on that oh, stage. Turns us to radio. A little that turns still, to radio. My whole body is just yeah, covered it. in goosebumps. It's it. But that flag is our only hope. That's, it's, it's, it's an optimistic symbol. A lot of his flags, you know, are about, Set in oil fields, yeah, and it's about yeah, yeah, it's a dark car, sort of carbon addiction. Yes, and this is just pure Beautiful. steam. It's kind of a prayer. It's a uh, and a warning. It's both. I think you've turned it into something that's pure and hopeful. Is um, beautiful. Yeah. So what he's done is compressed an entire day into the duration of the song. So you're seeing it, obviously. Happening much faster than all oh, yeah, the changes this the is, shadows, though. Everything yeah. is real. I mean, in the sense that it's. This is how it will look. Where our, where our screensaver is not good enough for you. <laughs> um, so thrilled. What else will be good, really? The reveal, um, the elevation reveal. Okay. So you'll know this tune, even if it's played on the transistor. We are making a song and dance out of it. Mm. We're taking all these creatures, there's 120. I said, how many uh, of the endangered species in Nevada? I think there's 120, right? Yeah. So 120 endangered species, from insects to birds, and they become this inspiration for the end of the show. That sounds like a bummer, but it is not. It's it's it's, it's kind of about wonder. And who created and this? The one, this is Devlin, who's beautiful, one of our greatest collaborators yes. and dear comrade of ours. And then we make the building disappear. Whoa! That's kind of impossible. Whoa! <laughs> There's the archive, there's the car park. Because <laughs> if you show what's on the outside at the resolution of the screen, the building disappears. Wow. I mean, right down to the detail. I mean, it even just looks like there's just a construction fence around the outside of that stage. I mean, it's wild. How we're, we're very fond of the garbage in the alley. Yes, yes. <laughs> Industrial light and magic garbage. That is absolutely yeah, incredible. Can we disappear these buildings? We don't need yep. the music, but we could just disappear the buildings. So these are in order of yeah. as, as, as to how they were built. Yeah. So we want to make, we want to go back go. in time in detail. There we go. Here, Here we, we go. go. Here okay, we go. watch this. This is sped up. We go back 100 years slowly, but we get there. And it's done in sequence. Yeah, so each building is removed according to the yeah. order in which it was built. Pretty much. In reverse. We, we cheated sometimes. <laughs> if, the, if, um, there was, if there was a building in the way, we got rid of that. Yeah. Yeah. But it looked the airport's just about yeah. to go. Because you forget that this yeah. is what Las Vegas looked like a yeah. hundred years ago. Wow. Las Vegas means the meadows and the first European who came here, of course, there were indigenous people here, but the first European was a priest called Cortes. And we, had, we played with the idea that he had, you know, 
he saw visions of the future. And we, he's part of the inspiration behind Atomic City that you can't really uh, see it. Wow. <laughs> there he is. It's is that David still, Copperfield of us? Was see, that yeah, yeah, David Blaine of us? We made the city disappear. That's some good shit, guys. <laughs> that's all I'm going to lie to you. Well, that's the that's thing a... about this. This can bring you to any time and place and make you feel like you're there. There's a, an amazing architectural manual c called Learning from Las Vegas. Mm. The concept is that actually the playfulness of this aesthetic. Most cities are built by men. They're very adult constructions. Here you have a city that looks like it has been designed by children, but it's in fact being designed by adults who wish to behave like children. Should we go downstairs and no, listen I think to it downstairs? Down there. Okay. We'll yeah. listen to it downstairs. <laughs> Willie, yeah. thank, you for, yeah. thank you for your generosity, <laughs> the time, and, and for being a part of this. All right, let's park the lols and go downstairs. Take a look and step on the stage, which isn't really a stage. It's in fact a oversized replica of an algorithmic limited edition turntable designed by Brian Eno. Yeah. I feel so grateful that this place exists and that we're gonna to get to see you in it and others will be able to make of it what they will. And you will inspire others to really push themselves in, in, in new ways because you're taking it so seriously. I'm also sad that we've spent so much time experiencing something so beautiful in these really kind of ruddy, kind of awful environments at times, you know what I mean? It's like, I don't know Whoa. if we, Yeah, you know, it's like... And we spent a long time putting up with reverb that wasn't supposed to be there and bad concrete bunkers, you know? It's mad, yeah. I mean, we've had some of our best shows in dirty little clubs. Yeah, yeah. That's cool. But in a sports stadium... One man caught in a barn's wire fence One man he resists One boy washed up on an empty beach One boy never will be kissed You can turn it off! Thanks, Joe. So that's the sound. This is it. And this right? is the Brian Eno turntable. This turn is the Brian Eno turntable. I just love how, you know, it, like I said, it feels like every step has led to this moment. You've embraced your past in a way that, and presented it in a way that utilizes the space for all of the technology and all of the mm -hmm. advancements, but never at the sacrifice of what the band truly means. Thank you for Thanks. accompanying us on the first journey into this environment when it was just a building site, and now you're here. But it's also amazing when it works, how all of a sudden you start to just, it feels like, oh, this is gonna be amazing. In the end, this is about trying to make a connection with our audience. That's what this is about, trying to make the worst seat in the house the best seat in the house. Whether it was jumping into the crowd, whether it was climbing speaker stacks, mm. whether it was mm. early forays into video, you know, this was all just an attempt to get closer to our audience, and this is it. And Atomic City, the, the tune I sent you down your phone, it's just an invitation to our audience. It's like a camolia. Do you know what camolia is? No. It's an Irish word for like, uh, a camolia is like uh, a song that invites everybody in. Dude, as I said on text today, the song is a crush. It's like a, there's, there's energy and there's, there's a real sense of purpose. Las Vegas was known as Atomic City. Mm because they had atomic bomb tourism you here in the this, 50s. You sent me this yeah. thing I knew nothing about. Yeah. That they would actually market it like a reason to come yeah, to come Nevada. And watch, come and watch the mushroom cloud. Yeah. yeah. In fact, the atomic explosions were as big a draw as the gambling Crazy. back in those days. Crazy. But now, yeah. all the fear and dread of spinning the atom and using it as a weapon of mass destruction, there may be clues for how we get out of the climate crisis through fusion rather than fission. Though even fission, which is you know, yeah. regular nuclear energy, is getting safer and smarter. And we've campaigned yeah. against nuclear energy, and we've kind of turned around a little bit on that one. And so the lyric, Atomic Sun for Everyone, that's that reference. So we're using it as a comic, in the comic sense, Atomic City, but actually the idea that by not splitting the atom, by yeah. fusing the atom, you have unlimited energy. It's just a beautiful, I'm glad hopeful you... idea to plop in the middle of a 70s swing stomp. Yeah, it's definitely Blizzard a stomp band, to it. Yeah. Cozy power. I like how the rhythm section is really like fun, yeah. fucking kicking yeah, the door kicking. in on that, right? In yeah. a big way. And it's great hearing the unmistakable 
playing of, of Adam and Larry and yeah. hearing Larry on the song. And we touched a little bit about that because by, when we caught up at the beginning of the year, everybody knew he wasn't going to be match fit for this particular run of shows, but he's on the song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, it's so good. It's really tricky to, for him. And he, he came in the night before we, we recorded it in Sound City. Mm. Was it where I've, I was wanted to record? You've never done it's it before? No, it was Amazing. the first session. So we're in Nirvana, so, did so Smells Like Teen Spirit, did they? Yeah, yeah, they oh, yeah, did, yeah. I mean, it's so, like, so, such so a many studio. stories in that studio. And Edge wanted us to go there. And Larry went the night before to just make sure he, he, was, he didn't know if he, he could play for, for an hour mm. or he didn't know if he could play for 15 yeah. minutes. And he just played, he just, he, he, he played up a storm. Don was saying his tech that he loved the sound of the room so much he ended up playing for like three hours. Yeah, because it's not just, just th that drum sound is what, I mean, that's why Dave loved that. He yeah. ended up getting the, the desk and that's because the drum sound, that's why you hear that yeah. and smells like Teen yeah. Spirit. That's just yeah. the room. Yeah. yeah, it was the right place for us. And, you know, it took, it, it took its toll on Larry. He, he's miming. We're doing the video and yeah, he's like, yeah. ow. Yeah. But he's, he's, he's going to get back to fitness. And being here as well and seeing this with his own eyes, knowing that you've all been it's, preparing it, how is that for him? It's a heartbreak yeah. for Larry yeah. to be here yeah. and to see this and know that Bram is standing in for him. And by the way, Bram yeah. is a Seen superstar. Wow. Yeah. It's amazing. He was a fan of Larry's and a student of Larry's. And now he'll be here playing instead of Larry, and that's, that's got to hurt as much as some of the injuries, but he gave it all on this song anyway. I could never um, ever put myself in anyone's shoes on either side of that, but yeah. there's something beautiful within the manifestation of it if you, can, if you can get there. The idea of a student, someone who was mentored ultimately into their instrument, into their passion through someone like Larry, who's done that for countless drummers who've gone on to make music their life. Well, drummers are born, not made. And True. they speak their own language. They are, they're a breed apart. And we're nothing, man. That's, that's where the rock and roll comes from in our band. Mm. So to find this guy, Bram, who's, who's bold enough to step into Larry Mullen's shoes, that's a rarity. You know, we had the first rehearsals with him. Yeah. And I wasn't there for the first few days because they just wanted to get to know each other. I, I go up in the dressing room and I'm seeing Edge and Adam and, and I'm asking how things are and in runs Bram. He walks in, he goes, oh, there is a fourth member of you two. <laughs> He'll be fine. He's going to be fine. <laughs> He'll be fine. He's a cheeky fucker. And yeah, he's, yeah, he's, he's part great. of us now. This is not a victory lap. This is, this is the SOS, the spirit of that, modernized, brought to life in the full U2 experience. There's a new song. This feels like a new era to me. And, and I, I wanted to give you the chance to elaborate on that because people will come and see the band live for the first time in some time and for the first time ever here. I've never seen anything like this. So where does it go from here? Well, I think new, new music, new, new tunes. There's a lot that we have ready and some that need a little dusting off, but will be ready soon. So I tell you, we've got some amazing new songs. Really exciting. Age is about 100 in the bag. Um, I have about 20, but Adam's got some thing to contribute. Larry will, have, well, Larry will be sitting there going through the bag going, yeah, yeah no, that's shite. Yeah, yeah. That's shite, <laughs> yeah. that's shite. Yeah. Is there anything here with, that isn't shite? <laughs> and, and, and we'll find 10. And that's all you need. That's all you need. 10. And, and that's your reason to exist. If not, you two should just fuck off. Go, you know, Go live on an island or go away and be a, you know, be a nuisance yeah. um, somewhere in the world or useful somewhere in the world. Either will do. But if we want to continue as a band, it's only about one thing. It's about the text. It's about the tunes. It's about the performance. Yeah. It's about whether you believe us or not. And we have an extraordinary musical genius in our band and we will try i will try to put into words what the music he is making i make it with him yeah yeah we make it together but it's las vegas or bust baby hey <laughs> you finally got front row seats to the big fight that's, that's right it, it is that's, a big that's one. what it is it's, it's a, a big one tonight. the fight is for our future yeah. it's love versus luck but that's what our band is built around yeah it's not like it's not just friendship we overuse the word love 
you know, like the Beatles did. Yeah. And you want to be, you're either, you know, he's like, whoa, back off, because it's a lazy word to use unless it has meaning. And if it doesn't have meaning within the band, then it's not going to have meaning outside of the band. So this is the time when if people have lost their love, they should fuck off, <laughs> including me. <laughs> and you know what I mean? That's, that's what it is, right? Yeah, dude, that's what it is. And if you're not falling in love with music, because yeah, yeah, you're, yeah. you know, this is what you, music pays our, our bills. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah. if you don't love music, you know you have to, it's your but time you had, to you, fuck off. You had me yeah. fuck off. <laughs> Thank you. The thing we've not forgotten is what a privilege it is to be standing on this stage playing our songs in front of this audience. Yeah, yeah. And we take that hugely you know, importantly. It's like, we don't want to mess up, you know? You don't want to waste that opportunity.